And now two interesting questions. Um, is it relevant for us? And two, when can we expect to see these shoes, right? Hi everyone and uh, welcome back on the channel. My name is Alex. I hope you're all doing uh, great. First of all, without uh, diving into today's topic, um, we did it. We, reach, uh, we reached uh, 1,000 subscribers on the channel. It happened over the weekend. Um, so I'm, I'm a bit speechless. It's, um, you know, I'm, I'm really, you know, happy at the same time speechless, uh, but most importantly, very thankful and, uh, you know, just thank you to each and every one of you um, for joining the, the community here on the channel. I have one question for you today. Jump in the comments and let me know uh, if you have an idea of a video, a special one that we could um, do for this special occasion. I have, um, you know, I have tons of ideas, but I would like it to, to come from you. I can do pretty much anything as long as it's uh, legal and, and not dangerous. Um, so you, you let me know and hopefully we can pick one of those um, ideas. All right, today's topic, um, shoes below 25 millimeters of stack height in the heel. Quick reminder for those of you who are new to the world of running shoes or new on the channel, um, stack height is the, the, the height of the, the stack of the midsole. Um, it can be either measured in the heel or in the forefoot and when it's measured in the heel, uh, it's measured in the center line of the shoe at 75% of the shoe length and it's done in a size, I think, US 8 or 8.5 and, and EU 42.5. Please correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, um, but that's the idea. And so, um, you know, shoes have changed quite radically in the, in the last years, uh, going from those uh, racing flats that everyone was um, wearing back, you know, four or five years from, from now. Uh, and we began to see more and more uh, those shoes with higher stacks. Um, now, you know, track and field and um, athletics in, in general have a governing body, which is World Athletics. And um, this governing body decided to put an end to the stacks going higher and higher. And so that everyone was competing at uh, arm length, they decided to install um, a set of rules um, with which uh, each shoe manufacturer have, has to comply and the athletes competing in um, races sanctioned by World Athletics have to comply as well. Uh, so this happened last year, it was supposed to be applied for the Olympics and then it would have been revised at the end of 2020. Now, COVID hit uh, the planet and this didn't happen, um, but that those rules are still uh, in place now and they should be revised after the Olympics at the end of the year. Um, as you can see here on my screen, there are different uh, stack heights that apply to different events. So we won't be looking at uh, field and, and triple jump type of events, we're looking at track events. So everything up to 800 meters, there's a stack height limit of uh, 20 millimeters. That's not for us, we are uh, endurance athletes, that's, that's very short. And then everything above um, 800 meters, so in the case of the Olympics, it's the 1500, the 3000 meters, 5000, 10,000 meters, uh, you know, 3000 steeplechase and so on. And for those events, there is a limitation of stack height of 25 millimeters. Um, so, you know, that, that's the rule, 25 millimeters. Now, why is it relevant for us? Uh, because there is a list of shoes that are approved below that limit or above that limit, depending on whether they fall in the track category of 20 millimeters, 25 millimeters, or in the road category of 40 millimeters, which is the case, for instance, for the Vaporfly, the Alphafly, which are pretty much the shoes that uh, triggered the controversy. Um, and so manufacturers have uh, started to uh, implement those rules and more specifically so, they decided, uh, all of them at the same time, but that's the, the magic of innovation and competition, when one has an idea then the others follow, um, they decided that they would uh, release shoes below that 25 millimeters of stack height, so that are compliant for track events above 800 meters, and those shoes would be spikeless or um, with those integrated spikes. 
So not the spikes that you screw in, but you know, spikes that are molded in the, um, in the outsole, uh, the rigid, rigid plastic outsole of those shoes. Uh, and I will tell you at the end of the video why this is relevant for us, long distance runners or at least endurance athletes. Um, but yeah, so this is, uh, here you can see the, the list of shoes. You can find it on the website of uh, World Athletics and you have, you know, all the shoes listed and you see if they're compliant for um, track events up to 800 meters, track events from 800 meters onwards and, um, and the road events, so below 40 millimeters. Um, so there are four shoes that I would like to discuss with you today. The first one is the Nike Strict Fly. The second one is the Adidas uh, Avanti, Adizero Avanti. Uh, the third one is the New Balance LDX. And the fourth is the ASICS, which doesn't have a name to the best of my knowledge yet. Um, so, you know, let's go through them. First one, Nike Strict Fly. It seems to be um, a shoe with a Zoomex in terms of midsole uh, and less than 25 millimeters of stack height in the heel. So something, you know, we could say similar to the Vaporfly, provided it comes with a carbon plate, which we do not know yet, but I guess it will have one. Um, the outsole quite interestingly, and by the way, I'm showing you this on the Instagram, uh, you know, web browser uh, thing. So you see the sources. Obviously I did not take any of those pictures and I want it to be very clear that the sources are, are not me or my camera, it's someone else and you have the, the Instagram page so you see where it comes from. Um, and very interestingly, the, st the Strict Fly has a very similar type of um, um, outsole design compared to the Alpha Fly. So those horizontal lines uh, with the wave shape, no spikes, you cannot add them. Um, and no, um, you know, no textured spikes on the on the outsole. So that's for the strict fly. Uh, then we have the Adidas Adizero uh, Avanti. The Avanti already exists. It's a lineup of uh, spikes, but this one, as you can see, seems to have those. Um, here you can see the, the um, uh, how you call them, the integrated spikes on the outsole. That's what the Avanti seems to come with. It looks like, uh, you know, the uh, Adidas Adio 6, which we discussed already in the first uh, edition of the Rumor Decoder. Um, you can check it here, upper right hand corner, if you would like to. So I think it will come in that same, you know, colorway and probably release at the same time, hopefully. Um, but, you know, interesting shoe and this one, there's a breakdown of the components. And as you can see, it's most likely coming with um, energy roads, so those carbon roads that Adidas developed, um, a carbon plate in the heel, and the option to put, um, you know, metallic spikes underneath, uh, so to screw them into the uh, outsole, like on proper uh, spike shoes. This is the Avanti, and then the last two. This one is the ASICS, which there is no name for, I guess, but this one has already been used in a race. So this is a bit of a different animal. The others, the three others, uh, Nike Adidas New Balance, haven't been used in, in races yet. I don't think so. Um, but the ASICS has, it was two weeks ago, I guess, by Mo Katir. And um, the shape, interestingly, looks a bit like the, uh, the Metaspeed line. Um, at least from my, you know, uh, from, from what I can tell. I guess it will come with a flight from uh, Turbo, so the same midsole as on the, as on the Metaspeed. Uh, here you cannot screw in the, the spikes, but you have those textured um, spikes on the rigid plate on the outsole. So that's also another, another option here. And the last one was, um, was seen on Emma Coburn, the New Balance LDX. Um, so yeah, I mean, here I, I don't know what will be the specs in terms of, um, of outsole, um, but as you can see, it looks like the upper of a, of a spike shoe and underneath you have that midsole uh, with 25 millimeters in the heel and uh, probably, you know, something like 20, 18 in the, in the forefoot. Uh, I'd say that those shoes will most likely be in that uh, two to six millimeters um, of, of drop that's my, um, that's what I think. Um, but so, so that's it. And now two interesting questions. Um, is it relevant for us? And two, when can we expect to see these shoes, right? So first of all, is it relevant for us? Um, well, yes and no. 
Uh, no, it's not really relevant for us unless um, we are running uh, World Athletics sanctioned events or events sanctioned by uh, national governing bodies, national federations that are applying uh, World Athletics uh, rules. So for instance, I know there, there's a race uh, early July in France and, and many others, but this one in particular I, I heard of, uh, where the, 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 you know, the organization is applying those, those rules. And so anyone who is willing to compete there has to comply with the, the, the max tank height of 25 millimeters uh, for their shoes for the event. Um, for anyone else, this is uh, completely irrelevant, meaning that you can go and run you know, your uh, 10K time trial on the track with your Vaporfly, which is obviously more than 25 millimeters in the, in the heel, and you'll be fine. But actually, there's, there's one thing that I think is interesting with these shoes, is that, uh, as you could see, the, for instance, the Strict Fly, I think, is, is the, the one that um, comes to mind when, when I have this thinking. Um, they, they're not all coming with spikes or um, those textured plates at the, at the, on, the, on the outsole, which means that uh, you could very well use them, the, the Strict Fly at least, on the road as well. And I must say that the idea of running with a shoe looking like um, the Vaporfly but with less stack height, so something a bit more stable, with more ground feel, um, but still, you know, the bounce and the energy return of the ZoomX, carbon plates by Nike, proven efficient, is that's something quite appealing to me and I could very well see myself doing interval training with these shoes and the strict fan in particular, but all these shoes on the track, but also um, with those that are not coming with the, um, the hard plate, hard rigid plastic plate, um, spiked textured at the bottom, I could very well see myself running with these shoes, um, you know, for road races, 5K, maybe 10K. So I think these shoes are actually relevant for us um, runners competing on, um, on the roads. Now, there's one rule that I think wasn't really there when I looked at the set of rules by, by uh, World Athletics at the beginning last year when they were released. And that is that these shoes have to be, to be available to the general public, or at least to all athletes, sponsored and not sponsored. That's again, to make sure that everyone is competing at arm length. Um, and that is, I thought it was four months prior to the, to the event. But it seems like, from what I can read here, it's actually one month prior to the international competition. Which means for the case of uh, Tokyo 2021 Olympics, uh, the events above 800 meters will uh, begin, I think, after July the 30th. Um, so these shoes should be released to general public before June the 30th, which is, uh, you know, in less than one month. So I think you know, this video is relevant now because we may see these shoes coming out more and more in the coming weeks. If not, then they won't be allowed in the Olympics. This being said, I'm not sure anyone will be using them in the, in the Olympics. Or if they do, it could be very well for the 10,000 meters, 5,000 meters events. Um, but you know, athletes are running with spikes. There's also the Dragonfly and, and all those um, spikes available right now. So I'm not sure we will see anyone using them at the Olympics, but should anyone use them, then the shoe has to be released to general public, even if that's in very limited quantities. There's no rule in that, in that respect, um, but it has to be released um, one month before the, the Olympics. I'm thinking of, of um, situations where either people are coming back from injury or have recently transitioned to um, shorter distances, for instance, for marathon runners who are running, uh, you know, one or two times a year at 10,000 meters on, on track, they may be willing to use these shoes. For instance, I have in mind um, the former triathlete, uh, Rio Olympic gold medalist Gwen Jorgensen from the US, who, um, when she left triathlon for uh, running, she competed. Back then, the world athletics uh, rule wasn't uh, in place. Uh, but she competed on 10,000 meters event, I think, it was in Stanford in the US, um, with the Vaporfly 4%, and that was allowed, and I think she, she um, wisely chose the shoe because running 10,000 meters at her pace, her race pace in spikes, was probably, uh, you know, too much pounding on the legs and something a bit too risky in terms of um, injury risk. Um, so, you know, those instances may be the cases in which those shoes will be used at the beginning when they will be released 
and then uh, maybe more and more athletes will be, will be using them. Um, that's it. Let me know in the comments, first of all, do you have ideas for a uh, you know, 1,000 subscribers video? I'm really looking forward to see what you, what you will come up with. And second, are these shoes interesting for you, for what you do, for what type of you know, distances you race? Um, let me know what you think, let me know which one you would pick, uh, should you pick any of, of these in the coming uh, months. And um, yeah, um, that's it. Enjoy your run today, guys, uh, your rides. Go beyond your limits and um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.